Assalamu alaikum my dear students today we are going to talk about uh, the different groups of Monera first of all uh, we will discuss bacteria or you bacteria whatever you like to say so let's move on with the uh, history of the science of bacteriology or microbiology uh, bacteria were first of all discovered by Anton von Leeuwenhoek in the year 1676 he was a Dutch uh, cloth merchant and he named these uh, bacteria as animalcules or small animals. Then in the year 1838, Ehrenberg, he coined the term bacteria. The science that deals with the study of bacteria is known as bacteriology. And owing to the great contributions of Robert Koch in this field, he is named as the father of bacteriology. Okay. There is one more important term in the science of uh, bacteriology that is pasteurization and this was uh, given by Louis Pasteur. Actually pasteuriz pasteurization is the heat killing of harmful bacteria. Okay, You are uh, giving a heat treatment to the bacteria so that they can die. You are actually giving them uh, uh, the heat treatment, high, high temperature heat treatment for a short time period. Okay, This is known as HTST, high temperature short time method. Now let's move on to the size of bacteria, their size. Uh, the bacteria range in size from 3 microns to 5 microns, that means they are very much small. You cannot see them unaided, uh, with, with, the, with the unaided eye. You, you, you cannot uh, see them with the naked eye. Okay? You have to take the assistance of light microscope because light microscope uh, makes you able to see in this range, in the microns range. Okay? Now uh, let's move on to the shape or morphology of bacteria. Uh, strictly speaking, uh, the bacterial cells, most of the bacteria, they maintain a constant uh, shape. But there are some uh, exceptions. Some bacteria are such that they change their shape continuously. Okay, they are, therefore they are known as pileomorphic. Okay, so majority of the bacteria have a constant shape. They maintain their constant shape, but some cases are there where you can see the bacteria uh, continuously changes its shape and these bacteria are known as paleomorphic bacteria okay uh, the bacteria on the basis of shape uh, they possess the following forms the first one is cocos cocos is derived from the greek word cocos which means berry okay and these bacteria they are usually spherical ellipsoidal or ovoid in shape and depending upon the number of these spheres or ellipsoids or ovoids, okay, we have different subtypes. The first one is micrococcus or monococcus. In this category, you have a single sphere. This is known as micrococcus. When you have a single sphere, single bacterial sphere, this is known as micrococcus. If you have two uh, spheres attached together, this is known as diplococcus. When you are having uh, four spheres attached together, this is known as tetracoccus. If in case four, uh, uh, eight spheres are attached together in the form of a cube, this is known as sarsina. And when you have a chain of spheres, chain of spheres which are attached to each other, this is known as streptococcus. Here you can see. And finally, we have staphylococcus in this category. In staphylococcus uh, case, you will see. Uh, a number of bacterial cells they form a cluster or bunch like structure okay a number of uh, spheres or bacterial cells they are arranged in the form of a cluster or a bunch now another uh, category another shape category is bacillus the literal meaning of bacillus is a small rod okay so bacillus means a small rod those bacteria which are shaped like a small rod, they are known as bacillus. And likewise, here we have different subcategories. Simply bacillus, if you have a single rod, okay, there is no association with any other uh, rod whatsoever. Then we have diplobacillus, when two rods are attached to each other, this is known as diplobacillus. And if you have a chain of rods, small rods attached to each other, this is known as streptobacillus, okay. One more category, third category is Vibrio. These bacteria, 
they are C or comma shaped. You can see here, they are C or comma shaped. Then we have spirulum. Spirulum bacteria, they are coiled like a sphere. Sorry, they are coiled uh, and they assume the shape of a coil or screw. Okay, here you can see they assume the shape of coil or screw. And then we have stalked bacteria. In this type, here you can see it more clearly. This is the stalked bacteria. This is the stalk and this is the main body of the bacteria. They are known as stalked bacteria. The body of bacterium possesses a small stalk here. Then we have another category which is known as budded bacteria. In budded, but, sorry, in budded bacteria, the body of bacterium is having a beaded appearance. It is like beads. Here you can see a number of bead-like structures you can see in the image. The appearance of uh, bacteria is such that it appears in the form of beads. Then finally we have filamentous bacteria. In this type, the body of bacterium is filamentous uh, like a fungal mycelium. It is the filamentous bacteria. It is very much similar to the mycelium of fungi. Now the pattern of flagellation in bacteria. On the basis of number and mode of attachment of flagella, flagella are the organs that help the bacteria to move from one place to another place. Okay. On the basis of number and mode of attachment of flagella, where they are attached, okay, uh, you have different types of flagellations in bacteria. The first one is atrichus. Those bacteria we do not possess any flagella on their body surface, they are known as atrichus bacteria. Example is lactobacillus, here you can see in the image. Monotrichus, those bacteria where a single flagella is attached at one end of the bacterium, this is known as monotrichus and the example is Vibrio chlori. Here you can see this is monotrichus flagellation. Amphitrichus, in this type, the bacterial cell possesses one flagella at it is both ends. Okay, one flagella at each end. This is known as amphitrichus. Example is nitrosomonas. Then we have cephalotrichus. In this case, many flagella are attached at just a single end. You have a number of flagella, a bunch of flagella on only one side of the cell. This is known as cephalotrichus, and the example is pseudomonas. Then we have lophotrichus. When you have a group of flagella attached at both ends of the cell, this is known as lophotrichus. Example is superellum volutens. And finally, uh, peritrichus. In this type, the flagella are uniformly distributed on the whole surface of the uh, bacterial cell. This is known as peritrichus. And the example is E. coli. Uh, this is all about uh, the shape and flagellation patterns of uh, bacteria. See you soon with a new lesson. Till then, stay blessed and thank you.